Hello everybody, this is Katie Vandermeer and you're here listening to me talk about a raise. Not a raise, that would be nice financially, but a raise. <coughs> Excuse me, my voice went out. A raise. A-R-R-A-Y-S. So, in programming, we use arrays to store similar blocks of data together. It's got to be of the same data type and it has to be used with loops. So now that we know how to use loops and now that we know about data types and how to store large quantities or large number of items, we're going to put them in our, into an array. It just makes more sense. That's what all programmers do and it's a way to store a large group of data together. So, let's look at a couple examples. Let's go through the, pres the book uh, real quick instead of the presentation, the PowerPoint. You can read that as you go through the quiz. Um, first of all, in some of our past programs, we've done things like accumulation. So we've created you know, we entered a number and then we added it to another number and added it to another number and then it kept doing that and added things up. With arrays, what you can do is store all of that data into one variable and then you don't have to create all of those variables. So if I wanted to store 50 employee names, I don't want to create 50 employee variables. That's just way too many. So I would create an array of 50, such as declare string names and then 50. We use brackets to declare an array. And then we could store into this one variable called names up to 50 different names. So it's kind of like, let's look at Excel. In a string, it would be like, this would be one array, string, uh, names, size 50, and then the first name would be here, like K-A-T-I-E, that would be one string, and then J-O-H-N, and B-O-B, and so on. So you could do that up to 50 times. This would be the index in the zero spot and this would be index in the one spot, index in the two spot, and so on. So why did I start at zero? I wonder if we could highlight that. I started at zero because counting starts at zero in programming. Trying to see if that will duplicate. So it would go on to however many employee names from 0 to 49, which would be 50 names. If you were doing like a number, like int ages, or let's do like test scores. So int test scores. Hmm, we'll call that a float or a double. and say I have 25 kids in class and I want to store the test score for everybody. So I would I'd make it size 25 and then this would be the index 0 again and it always starts the same so uh, let's say that this would be 97.5 78 uh, 68 and 99.5. So these would be test scores right here. And each one has a block of memory. So one data, I'm sorry, one variable name, test score, size 25, it would go from 0 to 24 and then each block stores one test score. So if you wanted to do something like a parallel array, you could do string student names. We're going to do this and I'll show you an example. I make it size 25 and in 
a parallel array is not linked, it's just a conceptual link. So this could be Katie's score and Bob's score and um, Joe's score and Frank's score and so on. See, they're linked to, they're conceptually linked. There. So an array is just, again, a better way to store data because instead of creating 25 different variables or 50 different variables, you only create one variable and you define the size between brackets. Another way to look at it is right here. A couple terms that you should know. Um, index or subscript, that's the placeholder that we call an array. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, that goes from index or subscript 0 to 4, which is an array of size 5. And then the value that's inside of it is an element. So 97.5 is an element that's in subscript or, or index 0 of the test scores array. <coughs> Katie is, in, um, is an element that's in the index or subscript of the 0 spot of the student names array. So those terms you, you'll want to know because they're common in every programming language. We always start at zero uh, for programming except in small basic, but pro, um, arrays are pretty easy in small basic so we'll um, have fun with those today with our programs. Um, but they always store number. Now sometimes people get confused because you think it's one block so if you wanted to store, it would only store like one digit, they think, but that's not true. If this is a double, it's, it means that it could store any negative or positive number that's between 64,000, negative 64,000 and positive 64,000, and it could include a decimal. So just because, you know, if it were an int, like int ages of the 25 students, and I wanted to store um, the age of everybody, it doesn't mean it just is one single digit. It could store any valid age. That's, that's any number. Just one array reference, re referencing that. Whoops, wrong page. <coughs> Excuse me. It is raining today, cold. I'm just cold. Uh, assigning values to arrays. So how do we assign values to the array? Um, typically you would use a loop and you could say enter it into zero spot, enter it into the one spot, and enter it into the two spot, but that's repetitive and stupid. Am I allowed to say that? It just is too much code. So you use a loop. So we know how to use a for loop if we have the size of the array, if we know it's size 25, we'd write a for loop that runs 25 times and enter in or put that one line of code and reference it, reference the index and have the index increment. So we use a loop to step through an array. Now this is done differently in every language, so we'll learn how to do that in small basic. But uh, for loop, is typical if you know the size. There's two types of, an ar of arrays as well. <coughs> We're going to work with something called a static array. A static array doesn't change the size. We know it's 25. It runs 0 to 24. It's, it can't store more than 25 numbers. Or we know it's size 100 or size 4 or whatever the size we declare it. It's called a static array. It doesn't change. The other type of ar arrays you can create are dynamic arrays, and those are a little bit more efficient when dealing with computer memory because it gives you a beginning spot and then it grows to however large it needs to be. Um, but those are a little bit more complicated in coding, and they're different in every language. And I'm not sure that even small basic allows us to do dynamic arrays, so we'll create static arrays and just focus on static arrays for this class. So how do we write a loop? So here's a quick example. 
um, declare integer series 10. So we have an array called series of size 10. Instead of again saying enter in a number for um, the 0 spot, the 1 spot, the 2 spot, we run a for loop that runs 10 times and then we enter in a number. Very simply and small basic. I'll pull all these files together for you in one document and share them in Blackboard as well. But very simple and small basic, we got to look at how to declare an array. Um, in the Introducing Small Basic PDF, Chapter 10 is the one that you want to look at. Um, that is not the array yet. What is an array? Um, notice here, arrays in Small Basic, they count, they start their count at 1. So if you wanted to do the age array, you'd write your basic for loop. For i to 5. Just make sure. For i equals 1 to 5. And we use the n4. Whoops. Okay. And figure out what language I'm right typing in. Enter dot write. Um, enter your age. Enter age for person. I'll show you a little trick for person. Number plus I. And then we want to enter in ages into a particular spot. What do we want to put it in? To our index. That's what I typically stands for. And that would be text window dot read number should work. Then we end the for loop. So let's run this basic array. Enter age for person 1. 78. I need to space that apart. You see, that's kind of messed up. 31, 43, 25, and then 42, and it ends. Five times, all of the variables are stored in this one variable, or all of the values are stored in this one variable called ages. I'm going to add, I'm going to add a space there so it's not so screwy when you read it. Okay, 1 to 5. If you had 10 ages, all you do is change the times that the loop runs. Now we have age 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Lots of code, I mean lots of things that are happening, but only 4 lines of code. Super easy. That's how we fill an array. Make sure you reference the index. You can call this I thing whatever you want. You can call it counter like we did with chap the last two chapters. You can call it subscript. You can call it anything you want as long as it's not something special to the, to the system, a special value. So say you want to find an average. So we take in something, find an average. I'm going to do this for the homework, so I want to show you again. We're going to use the same loop. i equals 1, 2, 10. And then uh, let me end my 4 so I don't forget. And let's say that we want to find an average age. So if I want to find the average of these 10 people's ages, I need to um, create a total variable. I'm going to set that equal to 0 to begin with. And then I would also have a variable for average. Okay, average age. And total, we're accumulating here. And total is always done the same way. Total equals total plus ages in the i spot. That would total it up. 
when I leave the for loop, then I can figure out the average age. So average age is now equal to the total divided by however many ages you had, in this case 10. But this could be a, um, that could be a variable as well. Window dot right line. Okay, let's test this. You don't have to be coding this right now, just watching how it works because you'll be doing it for your assignment. I'm not going to make a Code With Me video for this chapter because we're running out of time, to be honest with you. <laughs> There's a lot of things we need to do. I know you guys are working very many hours on this class, and uh, I do believe there's great value in the Code With Me, uh, but I'll make a video for the assignment to help you get started on that. And I've heard that some of you are watching them. You know, you, you want to start learning to code on your own, so you, so you don't need to always be so, you know, dependent on somebody showing you. So when you're given a problem, I want you to start to figure out how to solve it on your own to kind of prepare you for your next programming classes. So we'll, we'll fade out, phase out the code with me at this point, but I'll still make videos, help videos on, on what to do. So here we added up the, the 10 ages, the total one in the background. We could pull our, our calculator and add these all together real quick and divide by 10 to make sure our program's doing it right. 38, 54, plus 36, plus 49, shoot, 49. 38, 29, 343, yeah, and we divide that by 10, 34.3% or 34.3 is the average age of this group of people. Awesome. Last thing, when you want to display all of the ages, um, guess what? You write a for loop for that. I equals 1. You can always use I. You can use the same for loop. You should be able to spout, you should be able to write these for loops now really easily. And let's do uh, text window dot write line. And the age of person, let's say, one of person I is plus ages in the I spot, always use your hard brackets. You can never, ever, ever just reference an array without using the hard brackets. There you go. The person of, the age of person one is blah, blah, blah. And that will run 10 times, so you'll get a whole bunch of data there. The average age of this group is 53.4, and here are the ages of, of the people. Matches up. Perfect. Got it? That's a raise. Pretty easy, right? I hear you all going, yeah, I got this, man. Cool. Let's see. Um, there's something that's super important. is is called uh, overloading or overflowing the size of the array. You don't want to do that. That's what you would accidentally go to a spot of the program that doesn't exist. So let's say that you ran this loop. Let's see, we have the array of size 10 because that's what we filled it. And then let's say that we um, ran it 15 times. You're going to get junk in those last five places because there's no value. The array is not that size. So you don't want to overflow the size of the array. Some other um, important things, back to the chapter, some other important things in here, page of my own, 289, processing the contents of the array. So you know we use arrays to walk through. We looked at things like filling them, adding them, 
averaging them, printing them out. But um, you can also search through them, and you can also sort, store strings in them. So I want to show you a couple other programs and how they work so that you can use those for your assignment as well. I think I'll just leave out of this um, file for now. Make sure you uh, obviously read the chapter. And then as you um, are looking at some small basic examples, Reference this small basic chapter 10 it was where it shows you how to use arrays. This shows you how to enter in a string of names that I'll show you in a program as well. Notice um, they're using I as their counter. Again, you can use whatever. I just is typical because it stands for index. Um, in uh, the book and also in small basic you can have more than one dimension these are called two-dimensional or you could have three-dimensional arrays and uh, how you work with those are loops inside of loops so if you wanted to not just store one array of data like that or one array like this but you wanted to store a table of data like um, the like a uh, a table like like uh, the days of the month and um, you wanted to store um, or the months of the year but if you want to store Monday Tuesday Wednesday and, and so on and then have all of the numbers whatever that might be like the first the second the third you could have two dimensions of this array so you would have it might be called days of month and there would be four weeks and seven days in each week now that would only give you 28 so you might have to make this a little bit bigger um, like five or months of year could be one variable that would be 12 months Whoops and then each month could have up to 30 days, 31 days. So in um, the zero index of this one would be January and then the first one of this would be January 1st and then zero and two would be January 2nd, I'm sorry, third, and um, zero, so you know if you you reference zero and zero of this array that would say January because we count it zero it would be January 1st and then we kept zero because we're in the zero month and we said one Jan and that would store January 2 and zero and two January 3 and so on and then let's say so what does like six um, in the 20 fourth store. Six index would be the seventh month, so that would be July. Twenty-fifth index would be the twenty-fifth. Twenty-fourth spot is the twenty-fifth place of the array, so that would be July twenty-fifth. See? That's a two-dimensional two array. It's a table of data, so to speak. And you can actually do those in Small Basic as well, um, such as this. This array, friends, stores a name and a phone number. Um, you can have more than two dimensions in array as well. You can have three or four dimensions. It gets more complicated, but it's possible. So here's some additional programs you can check out if you like. Let me show you a few additional programs in Small Basic that I'm going to compile inside of one document. First one, Array 1. This program asks the user how many tests they want to enter and then stores them into an array. There is a menu that shows you how to do the average, which we looked at. There's a one that shows you how to do a high score and a low score. So this is kind of sorting through the elements of the array. 
Now make sure you're I, I'll make sure you're um, paying attention to this because you're going to have to do this for your homework assignment, where you'll have to find highs, lows, and add things up. So, and we still do air check too. Remember? Ah, that's okay. We like air check. It's easy now. Uh, get number of test scores. This is a module. So we go down here. We ask how many test scores. We want at least two test scores. So we have our prime read. Bam. And then as long as it's, or if it's less than two, we take it in again. That's all that we're not doing any arrays in here. We're just finding out how many test scores do they want to enter. So once we have a value to count, that's going to control our loop. So if we run this program and we say we have three test scores, it runs three times. If we run it and say we have five test scores, it runs five times. Whoops. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. See? Pretty cool, huh? So that's what count does. So we take in, and then you'll notice here on this module, the get all test scores. So this is the number of tests. Now we're going to get the actual scores. And we're writing our loop for, from index one to count. So this is kind of like a, it says making sure that each value is between 0 and 100. So we have error check for this as well. Um, but again, if we had 5, then this is basically saying i to 5, or uh, uh, 1 to 5, or 1 to 10, to, to however many they enter. So we get a test score, which is come down here and get a test score right here. So we come down, we get a score, enter the score of index uh, of that index value, which we set to 1. So it'll say enter score number 1. And then we put that into a scores array in the 1 spot, and we read in the number. Fill it up. That's all we do. Then we go back to where it was called, up here, and we have this error code. While scores in that zero spot is less than zero or greater than a hundred, it's wrong. No extra credit here. So we go down there and get it again. So that's just error check. You have a while loop inside of a for loop. Okay? You can do this when you do the homework assignment, you're going to do something very similar. You're going to enter in um, ra rainfall or uh, energy bills, energy bills and um, they have to be within a certain range, and you're going to store them into an array. Um, so that's that goes through this process for as many items as there are. Goes down, gets the score, checks to make sure that it's within zero to a hundred, and then goes down and gets the next score, checks to make sure it's between zero and a hundred, and so on. When this module is done, it goes back to the main place it was called, which is up here, and then we display our menu. So that's where it says, you know, I want to enter in um, three scores, that score, that score, that score. Here's our menu. Now that we've entered the scores and we error check them, do we want to show the average, do the highest, do the lowest, or end the program? So if we want to show the average, we'll go to a module that adds all those numbers up, divides by count, which is three in this case, and displays the average, then shows the menu again. So how do we do the average with the for loop? So display menu kind of controls the flow of this one. You can set up your, your calls differently if you want, but mm, again, notice your error check. It's between one and four. Got to have that. If it's 1, display the average. If it's 2, do the high value. If it's 3, low value. If it's 4, end the program. Okay? So display average. That is right here. We add a sum. Remember, I created my total variable and I put it in, and I set it equal to 0. You half your total variable you have to initialize to zero, otherwise you're going to get some junk in there because you can't use it 
in a calculation if it doesn't have an initial value. So we always set it equal or set it to zero to begin with. So then we um, say for i to, you could use count here, but we're going to use part of small basic called array dot get item count. And you pass the array into it and it will tell you it'll go around for as many items as there are in that array. So that's kind of like a dynamic array. That's cool. And then we just total them up. Sum equals sum, up, sum plus scores in the I spot. Awesome. Average equals sum divided by array dot how many items are in the array. Okay. And then average. That's exactly what we did in that first program we looked at. If we want to find a high value, we're going to compare. This is also in the chapter where it walks you through kind of a generic process of how to search through or sort through an array. So display high value, um, highest score, we set that to the very first spot of the array and then we're just comparing. So if score in the I spot, notice we're going to go to two index. So we'll say you're basically this is where I wish we could do these um, lectures in class because if we have um, if we have this array called scores and 97, 86, 99, 67 and um, remember this is the index we'll just call this index 0, index 1, index 2, and index, shoot, 3. Actually, I'm going to start at 1 because that's where our loop is starting. So that's just the quirkiness of small basic. Okay, we have this variable called highest. And we set it equal to scores in the 1 spot. So what is that value? Highest equals 97. Then we're saying 4 count in the 2. So the index now is 2, this one, um, for as many as there are. And then we ask a question. And our question is if scores in the I spot, which is scores in 2, because that's where I is right now, so we're saying if that value, which is 87, is greater than the highest value, which is 97, we want something to happen. Is that true? No. So we just go on, increment the loop. Remember, I increments automatically. So now on the second iteration, we're going to ask if what's in the third spot, 99 is greater than 97. Is that true? Yes. So what do we want to happen? We want this to happen. We want our new highest value to be equal to whatever spot we're currently dealing with, which is 99. So now we go around again and we're asking the same question. If 67 is greater than the highest, we want something to happen this? No. So we break out. Guess what? We have a highest value when we end this loop and it's 99. So we just display the highest value. The low value method module does the same thing but it's less than. So we set a beginning spot and we just use the less than symbol and find the lowest score. So it it's basically comparing this one to here and then this one to here and now that this is the highest it compares this one to this. Um, if you were doing lower it compared this this would be the first lowest value and it compares to this. Now this is the lowest value so it compares to this. 87 is still the lowest value so it compares to 67 and now 67 since it's less than 87 is the new lowest value. So these, there's a lot going on in this program, but it shows you a lot of things that you're going to need to do for your homework. Okay? I'll share that one with you. Array 2. 
we added um, in this program a storing This version um, stores the student name in a parallel array and displays that where the value, where it's appropriate. So you may have to do this as well in your assignment, and I want to point out how you do that. Number of test scores, get that, okay. The parallel array portion comes when you ask the name of the student. So let's look for that. We have an array called names. This is the same. How many scores? Get the score. Let's give it a run and see where we're entering it. How many scores? Three. Okay, enter the name of student one. So this has got to be in the get scores module. Oops, Bob, 98. See that? Bob's score is a an 87. Why did I say 98? Jill's score is a 98. And Sally's score is a 67. Okay. We enter in Bob, Jill, Sally into one array called students. Oh, I just closed small basic, didn't I? Darn, oh gosh almighty. hate when that happens. Okay, let's go down to get all scores. Let's go down to get a test score because that's where it is. Get a test score. So now not only are we reading in the number that we just did in our last program, but we're reading in a name. So we create a new variable called name and we put that into the one spot here. So nothing new just we're creating a parallel array but there is something new when we want to search for a student um, and when you want to displore, displore, display that it's again an, uh, just using a loop to display the names so we have um, searching for the highest and the lowest and then assigning highest score, highest name, lowest score to the lowest name um, we still will talk about this module in a second, but that's where when we run this, three test scores, Jill, whoops, ah, John, ah, messed that up. we can do the lowest score, for example. And what our function does, our module does when you look at it is it searches like we just showed you how the search does, but it not only does for the number, it searches and matches up the name as well. So the lowest score is John, he had a, a 34, which is true. Um, the, other one, the other thing that this program does is searches a string. And this is kind of high, this is a comp, complicated task in some languages so it's kind of cool we can look at how to do it here in, in small basic but what is a student which name are you looking for let's see what Joe got so we put in Joe it goes through and searches through that array and pulls out Joe's number and name cool let's look at that and then we'll end this up so searching for a student so we um, Create an index, the found index at a negative one. So if a student is a found, the index will differ from one. It's we're making it invalid in case nothing is found. So it's a way to do some error code. So we enter in the student's name. 
we get how many names there are, and we just compare it. If the name that we're looking for right here matches what we put into the array, then we found the name. And if we found the name, then we can go to that place of the array, the found index, and display it. Or no student with that name. So that's kind of a cool program to look at as well. Um, there's a few other examples. A here, test scores average gets the high and low. Just a little bit more basic. Um, B, high and low, and then adds the user in. Mm, these might confuse you more. Well, no, they won't confuse you more. It's just other examples. They won't confuse you more if you watch the video. Um, other examples, A, B, and C, but Array 1 and Array 2 are going to be a primary examples that you'll use. You may want to look at this one here, example C, for your homework assignment because this shows you um, how, we, how to store the months. So here we initialize an array that um, it says, jan you know, a string array. So that's separated by co um, semicolons. So months in the one spot is January, and the two spot is February, and the three spot is March. And then we just display the month, so it'll say um, January, and then a colon, and then you want to read in the amount that that bill was. And that's similar. This program here is similar to how you would do your um, homework assignment. Math that round. That, that one's one we've been kind of searching for. So look at this as an example for your homework um, as well. All right. I hope you enjoy the assignment. Um, I might make a video for that as well. If not, I'll give you enough material that you'll know how to do it. So thanks for watching. Read the chapter. It's super important.